The article is about whether or not the open justice principle should apply to sports disciplinary proceedings, whether those proceedings are in public or private. The catalyst for it was the recent historic decision of the ECB, the Cricket Board's Cricket Disciplinary Commission, in the disciplinary proceedings currently ongoing about allegations of racism in Yorkshire cricket. Um, and my client, the witness and chief whistleblower about those allegations, the former cricketer Azim Rafiq, wanted those proceedings to be in public uh, because of the nature of the allegations. And uh, we made an application for the proceedings to be in public. They've never ever had cricket disciplinary, commission disciplinary proceedings in public. So it was, if you like, a rather um, unprecedented and historic, uh, maybe even ambitious, some people would say, application. Uh, but we succeeded in that application. And uh, that led me to write this article, which is really about the, the broader issue of whether or not such proceedings should be in public or. I think the article should be of interest, obviously, to sports lawyers, anyone who practices in sport and to um, those who work for uh, the regulators uh, who have to deal with disciplinary proceedings. So anyone in that field, lawyers generally in, interested in regulatory proceedings will also be interested. But I think it's got a much wider interest as well. Precisely the point that's made in the article and, and in, in, in the application, there is often a genuine public interest in the issues that arise in these types of cases. And uh, just to give you one example, when we were doing the Newcastle case, uh, we had a competition appeals tribunal hearing and they are in public. So it was one of the few parts of that case that was in public because it was in the courts. And we had an issue about jurisdiction um, in so a, a kind of technical legal issue in those proceedings. And because you could have live stream and a public hearing, uh, over 33,000 people logged in to listen to that hearing, which we were told was a record for any of such type court hearing ever. Uh, and it was a, simply a legal issue in a, in a case that involved a sports dispute. So it is of, I think, general interest to those interested in and involved in sport as well, uh, who have to deal with disciplinary proceedings. So anyone in that field, lawyers generally in, interested in regulatory proceedings will also be interested. But I think it's got a much wider interest as well. Precisely the point that's made in the article and, and in, in the application, there is often a genuine public interest in the issues that arise in these types of cases. And uh, just to give you one example, when we were doing the Newcastle case, uh, we had a competition appeals tribunal hearing and they are in public. So it was one of the few parts of that case that was in public because it was in the courts. And we had an issue about jurisdiction um, in so a, a kind of technical legal issue in those proceedings. And because you could have live stream and a public hearing, uh, over 33,000 people logged in to listen to that hearing, which we were told was a record for any of such type court hearing ever. Uh, and it was a, simply a legal issue in a, in a case that involved a sports dispute. So it is of, I think, general interest to those interested in and involved in sport as well. I think it's a very important topic um, because, and I've thought about this a lot when making the application, people say, well, it's unusual. Why have sports disciplinary proceedings in public? Because they are private proceedings organised by private bodies, such as the Football Association or the English Cricket Board. Um, but when, when one looks back at the origins and reasons for the open justice principle, and you read the old House of Lords cases or some of the more recent Supreme Court cases, you see the reason for it is that it's important that judges, even the best judges in the land, are subject to public scrutiny and courts are subject to public scrutiny so that they don't get their decisions wrong, so that they, they, they make sure their decisions are right. The transparency and the ability of people to see how the process works 
gives confidence that the system and the process produces the right results. And it's also so that the public can understand those results and why they are reached. That's why you have the principle. And then step back and ask yourself, why shouldn't that principle apply in the same way in sports disciplinary proceedings, perhaps not all of them, but in those types of proceedings where issues of public interest arise? Now, the, 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 the cricket case was an obvious one because institutionalised racism in cricket is obviously a matter of genuine public interest. There'd even been a uh, parliamentary uh, inquiry uh, into it in one of the select committees. So it was obviously a matter of public interest, but there, there are a number of others. And I remember uh, Law in Sport did a podcast with Lord Dyson about the Saracens case. We, we have lots of cases like that, which are about allegations of one club or athlete breaching rules and how that might give an advantage over others. Now, all of participants in the sport and fans of sport are, have a genuine interest in the outcome of those sorts of cases and, and that those sorts of cases, um, that their decisions are, are genuinely, usually now routinely published. Why shouldn't those fans or those other members of the public who have an interest be able to see how those decisions were reached, what arguments were made, what arguments were rejected. And in principle, there's no good reason why they shouldn't. And so that's what the article looks at.